Hi, hello, vanakkam and welcome back to yet another episode on your favorite Little Slaw YouTube channel. So today in this video, we are going to see, we are going to answer one of the uh, questions from our subscriber. Yeah, and uh, the question here is, uh, can can we create a video on how to do different uh, load testing like stress, a spike, etc. And that will be useful, very useful. Yep, uh, thank you so much for asking this question. Uh, because this is again a uh, part of the videos which I was creating for uh, step by step from end to end performance testing using JMeter. So if you haven't watched the video, please do watch it, check it out. It will be very helpful for someone who is uh, from the beginning to the advanced level. Uh, you can complete your entire performance testing using JMeter using these set of videos and that will be very helpful. And yeah, so in this video, like I told you, we're going to see how to do a stress testing. So I'm going to answer this question. And in, in our next video, I'll answer uh, how to do the spike testing. But for now, in this video, we'll see um, how to do the stress testing. And let me go to my G meter. Yeah, uh, so before we move on to this uh, step by step on understanding how to do the stress testing. So this is me, Asan Shanmugam. I welcome you all to our Little Sly YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed it yet. And uh, please do join my channel for getting quality content like this and getting discounts in my uh, training session. So in fact, uh, I'm going to have a load runner session in the second weekend of September. So if you are a member of uh, the Little Sly YouTube channel, you will get discounts uh, for the trainings and uh, the details about the load runner trainings will be uh, reaching you very soon. If you're interested, please do uh, join my WhatsApp channel and you'll be getting the updates regularly on all the videos for any help or assistance and about the trainings as well. And yeah, so coming to this part, uh, stress testing, yeah. So what is stress testing? So in fact, we do have a lot of other testings like baseline testing, we do have load test, we have volume testing, we have spike testing, endurance testing. But what is stress testing? Why do we need to do it when we are doing load testing? So stress testing is a type of performance testing. It's 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 uh, so performance testing has different types. So stress testing is one among it and uh, stress testing is a type of performance testing which is designed to evaluate how a system behaves under extreme conditions. And this stress test involves pushing the system beyond its normal operational limits to identify its breaking points and uh, to assess how it handles high level of stress and determine its robustness and stability. So in that, the first part of it is, so what is the objective? So we know what is stress testing. So that is uh, to test the system uh, behaves under extreme condition. Yeah, I agree. And to push the system beyond its normal uh, operations, which is beyond the load level. So what is the objective? Why should we do? Why is the question? So why should we do this stress testing? So uh, the first part is to, de to determine the system stability. So we have to assess how the system performs under excessive load and whether it can handle unexpected uh, spikes in demand. So what is the outcome of doing this test? So you can understand the point at which the system becomes unstable or it fails and to identify any bottlenecks and weakness. For example, you can locate the performance bottlenecks such as CPU, the memory or database limitations and the outcome of it is you can pinpoint specific areas of the system that need optimization or improvement. And when it comes to evaluating the system uh, recovery, you can test how well the system recovers from failure or excessive stress. So when you run the test, what happens is at some point of time, the system will break and then the system will come back, will recover from, the, from its failure or from the excessive stress. So you have to verify the system's ability to recover gracefully from the crashes or slowdowns and handle errors without data loss and also you have to ensure the reliability under extreme conditions the, so the objective is to validate that the system can sustain extreme conditions and still operate correctly and the outcome of it is confirm that the system remains reliable and that essential functionalities are maintained under high stress and when it comes to testing the resource utilization so this is very important uh, because for any test we 
normally yeah we do monitor the cpu and memory but for stress testing it's the main one of the main objective one of the top objectives to measure how efficiently the system uses resources such as cpu its memory its network bandwidth and disk input output under stress and the outcome of it is determine if the system's resource consumption aligns with expected limits and identify any resource leaks and then to assess the impact on user performance so to evaluate how high stress impacts the end user experience including the response times its throughput its error rate and also to ensure that the user experience remains acceptable even under high load conditions or understand the degradation impact and finally you are just preparing your environment for high traffic event so you are going to simulate scenarios that involve peak traffic or user load to prepare for high traffic events such as product launches or marketing campaigns and the outcome is to ensure the system is ready for high demand periods and that it can handle anticipated traffic spikes so now we'll see how to test the or how to do the stress testing so here i have uh, my test plan and uh, all my user defined variables my http request defaults my http cookie manager and your thread group under the thread group i have a few samplers which i was uh, demo using it for my demo on how to do the correlation part by using some regular expressions so if you haven't watched the video for regular expressions you please watch that video it is in my playlist so where i was using it for uh, uh, extracting uh, for dynamic boundaries so in this video uh, so using that same setup i'm going to uh, show you how to do the stress testing and uh, usually we have the view results tree so for doing the stress testing it's always advisable to disable the view results tree and to just keep the aggregate report because this has the uh, minimum the average and then the maximum response time and then you have the 90th percentile the 95th percentile and the 99th percentile so we'll just keep all these percentile for calculating the response times during the stress testing so now what's the next part so i'm going to the thread group and here i'm going to set up the number of threads to 1000 i'm going to run 1000 users and in the ramp up period I'm, i normally use five minutes of ramp up period so in this scenario it's like just thousand users i'm going to use 600 seconds which is like 10 minutes of uh, ramp up period uh, ramp up time so just like it'll take 10 minutes to ramp up all the 1000 users and in the loop count i'm going to run for infinite so i can set up the thread lifetime rather than the number of iterations or if not i can keep the test keep on running and at one point of time when i find the system completely fails and shuts down i can stop the test or i can just wait for the system to recover from its from its failure so for now in this example what i'm going to do is i'm going to just use 100 users because my system will not be able to handle that much load of 1000 users but still yeah anyways let me try and see how does what, what happens when we are running it for 1000 users and let me save this so we have two options either we can run it through the uh just start running here but again one of the best practice is to run your stress test using the non-gui mode so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the test using non-gui mode so to run the test using non gui mode i'm going to open my command prompt and here i have my command prompt and then let me navigate to the folder so let me take this one cd space this location yep now i'm into the location and then to uh, run the test using non gui mode we all know how to do it so it's going to be jmeter minus n space minus t and then the file name is extract print minus demo dot jmx and then minus l so this will uh, give us the test results the, the file uh, for the testing and then it's going to be extract again print minus demo dot jtl so i'm going to use the same name so yeah so the minus n which will run the jmeter non gui mode and then the minus t will specify the path of the jmeter test plan and then the minus l at the end specifies the path to the results file where the results will be stored and there are like other optional parameters as well uh, which is um, minus j thread which defines the number of threads or minus j ramp up will specify the 
wrap up period. So let me, I can even give it, so minus j threads equal to 1000, then minus uh, j ramp up equals 600 seconds. And then even in fact, if you expect the test to require more memory, you can increase the JVM heap size. You can modify the JVM arcs in the JVM script or use environment variables to set the heap size. And I think now we are ready to start the test. So let's start the test now. Um, so yeah, we are getting an error. No SLF4J providers were found, defaulting to no operation logger implementation. Class path contains, okay, it looks completely new, but yeah, it's, it's always solvable. So let's see how to fix this okay it shows the extract really i think uh, i'm in the wrong folder so let's see let let me just fix it first yeah it looks like i'm in the wrong folder so let me first uh cd into the right folder so it's extract print and then inside this i have to run my test yeah created the tree successfully using extract.jmx starting the standalone test Waiting for possible shutdown, stop test now, heap dump, thread dump message on port 4445. Yes, that test is about to start now. Yeah, now we are started to, uh, we, are, we are starting to get some uh, results for every few seconds. So now we are running a 1000 user load test and now the ramp up, ramp, ramp up is in progress. So at least for next 10 minutes, that will be the ramp up process that will happen. And then after that, all the 1000 users will be in the system. And I believe my system will have, will be able to handle the load. But yeah, it, since it's running in non GUI mode, yes, I believe uh, we will be able to handle the load and let's wait for some more minutes and let's see what happens. So yeah, uh, let me give a, a quick explanation. So what happens here is at around uh, 23 seconds, I've got 39 users and at around 15, uh, 53 users, uh, 15, 53 seconds, I've got around 89 uh, users. So for every 30 seconds, uh, I could see 50 users are getting um, ramped up into the system and at around uh, five seconds, I could see 539 users. So which is like more, more like uh, for every 10, uh, sorry, for, for every one minute, I could see like 100 users coming into the system. So at around 1,000, uh, like 10, around 10 minutes, I could see all the 1,000 users have reached and no users have finished uh, during this time. And I could see the average response times, the maximum response time and the minimum response time as well. And there are like 0% errors. So the testing is running fine. And um, I could see uh, all the users are running in the steady state. And yeah, so what will happen here is there are two scenarios. So the first scenario is your test will fail at some point of time. For example, if you're running 1000 users and if your system is able to handle up to like 700 or 800 users, you will start to see the failures at around uh, 700 or 800 users where you can see the errors rate will start to increase like 5%, 10%. And then you will be getting a lot of errors when compared to the number of past transactions that is one symptom that uh, any time before you are able to see the error so that is the point is that's that's the uh, point of pass point like i would say that's the uh, capacity your system can handle so anytime when you start to see errors so mostly there'll be like 404 errors like page not found or uh, there is no response from the server there is uh, the server starts to respond or you will be able to see a lot of uh, requests that is getting queued so that is a point where you will understand that it's the maximum load the system can handle so it can be like around 600 or 700 or whatever it is and you'll start to see errors or other other uh, thing is like a, po a positive way where your system will be able to run or it will be able to handle more than uh, like 
1000 users so it will start working fine even with 1000 users but at some point of time you'll be able to see the cpu utilization is crossing 80 percentage so you'll be see uh, able to see the app server cpu percentage or the uh, memory will be crossing the maximum threshold like 80 percent 90 percent threshold so that's another scenario where your system's uh, capacity is reaching the maximum limit and you'll be able to see the garbage collection yeah that's another one or uh, you'll be able to see some memory leaks as well so these are some of the symptoms which shows that that's the maximum capacity and uh, beyond that it cannot handle the load so and yeah while running the testing so you'll you can can watch can watch the test that keeps running for more than like one or two hours and even sometimes you can even watch it for like running it for three hours and that's a good uh, way of doing the stress testing to see what is the maximum limit of your load uh, of your system and at some point of time yeah uh, so what i did is i just uh, pressed Control c and it asked me for terminate the bad job and i pressed s and after that i wanted to uh, view the results so what did i do is i went to the aggregate report i have browsed and then i opened the jtl file so when i opened it uh, i could see the samples the minimum response times the average response times the maximum response times the 90th percentile the 95th and the 99th percentile as well and apart from this you will have to watch your cpu the memory percentage the amount of uh, cpu uh, that's been utilized the amount of free memory that's been available in the system and the amount of process that's been used and the amount of data that's been processed so you have to watch all these metrics from the server side and that will help that will be very helpful for you to understand whether your system will be able to handle this much amount of load or you need to scale up or scale out your system and uh, you'll have to decide all these and you have to inform the stakeholders on this part so that's the way of running the stress test so you have to run the stress test so just to do a quick recap so we have all the uh, scripts everything is ready and then uh, i have uh, set up 1000 users i have set up the ramp up period to 10 minutes i have uh, set up the load count to infinite because i know what point i should stop because i'll be keep on monitoring all these metrics and when i start to see the errors i will stop or i will wait for some time to uh, for the system to get back up and running or else if i find like uh, i have feel like okay let me stop the test and see what is the maximum what the system can handle yes that's another way of doing it as well and then uh, after you okay and then you come back to your command prompt go to your right folder and then run your test with jmeter minus n minus t extract print demo so this is my file name sorry and then i used minus l uh, to set up the results folder and then even if you want to set up your uh, threads with by using minus j threads and then minus j ramp up will uh, set up these optional parameters and then once you start running the test you will see the ramp up period where the users will be ramping up and then at one point of time all the users will be ramped up into the system and you will start to see the uh, results popping up the metrics popping up like this in the screen uh, for every 30 seconds what is the minimum the maximum and the average response times and how many users are in the system and how many are finished so yeah so with that i come to an end and i believe this video would be very useful to you so please do try this and in the next video we'll see how to do the spike testing so until then it's bye bye from us and your favorite let us know youtube channel take care and bye bye